Hello everyone, welcome to Laurie's Little Studio. I'm Laurie and today we're working on this. So I ordered this fabric, but I didn't order enough. 45 inch wide for this skirt in the smallest size. This pattern gives you a size eight as the smallest option. So if you're using 45 inch wide fabric, you need three and seven eighths of a yard. And I ordered three yards. So I had to order an additional yardage and I'm, I have already oriented it correctly. I don't know why that's so hard for me, but when I have a, I guess a ditzy print like this one, I have to find a flower that looks the same and then I know that I've got the top of the fabric. This is the waistband right here. So I know that I've got it going in the right direction and I will have to cut two of the front skirt panels from this. So I have everything else cut out. So you need two backs. You need one back waistband, which that's what P6 is, one left tie band, which is what P5 is. I don't know if you can see these pattern numbers. It's right there. P4 is the front left waistband, and P3 is the front right waistband with the tie. Okay. Now there's one thing you need to look for on these pieces right here, and that is these marks right here. They are where you create a buttonhole. Okay, so see these two marks? Let me, on piece number three, there will be these two little marks right here. On piece number six, there's piece six, you will have these marks. So you're going to match up these on piece number three with these on piece number six to the proper size. Obviously you will have cut this to the proper size. I cut it at the smallest size. Let me back this up a little bit. I'm having trouble showing you what I mean. Okay. All right. So you've got these two pieces, piece number three and piece number six, and you'll match them up like so when we're stitching them and you're going to stitch from here to here and from here to here back stitching. And then when you press this open, you'll have this little opening here. And that is where your tie will, your tie will fit through there as you wrap the skirt around the waist. And then, and then, then it will be a straight waistband instead of offset. I hope that made sense, but I'll show you as we go along. Okay, so the next thing for me to do is get the back of the skirt cut. No, the front. Yeah, I already got the back cut. Okay, and I marked the top of the fabric so I know where the waistband needs to go. So the way a, a Berta pattern will look most of the time, I'm, I'm not going to say all of the time because I haven't used all the Berta patterns, but for the most part you will have this small layout that you can cut out like I've done and put on a piece of paper. And you can even pop this in your purse and take it with you to go shopping. I made notes on it. Um, you could write down how much fabric you need for each of these layouts, for each of these fabric widths, and you'd have your little layout guide yardage indicator. This is what I'm doing right here. This is 45 inch wide fabric. This is 55 inch wide fabric, but it tells you this is also 45 inch wide. 
it tells you that right there. And this one tells you that this is 55 inch wide fabric right there. The one thing I can tell you about Berta patterns is you really have to look at every single piece of paper and read every single instruction. I don't find them as intuitive as Simplicity or McCall's or Butterick. Uh, sometimes Vogue can get a little vogue but Berta is manufactured in Germany. Just looking at the picture sometimes works when you're working with a McCall's pattern or a Simplicity pattern or even a quick sew pattern. Berta, you really got to read all of this. So after I get the two front pieces cut, I've got to transfer my markings and then I have to do the interfacing. Now they have given me, helpfully, a guide right here that shows me how and where the interfacing is going to go and I will get into that once I get to that part. When I come back, I'll have this cut out and we'll get busy stitching. Okay, so today is the next day and um, I have a project I need to work on before I start on this skirt. It kind of came up late yesterday afternoon. But I also wanted to show you this. So, he bought me off of Amazon, it's a, it's a magnet, let's see, there's a, a pin that I picked up. It was a super strong magnet, but I could reach the floor with it, so let's just see. Wow. Okay, so, this is how long it gets. It is about, I'm measuring off of my board, it looks like it's about 34 inches long, does it say that? Apparently, oh here it is, right here. Right there. But if you want it in inches, I'm going to say 34. Well wait, right here is where I can, it might be longer than 34. It is 37 inches from magnet to the very end of the handle. So easily you can pick up things on the floor. And I find it very, very helpful, especially in this situation. I before before we moved here, my studio was hardwood floor. Um, and this studio floor is carpet. And it's also very light carpet, kind of a, a very pale gray, closer to white. Am I crazy? Yeah, I don't care. I fell in love with the house. So anyway, I wouldn't um, do this, you know, like push it this way. I would pull it so you don't bend this. It's it's fine and it's it's it'll work on in my studio. All right, so there was this that I wanted to talk about. And then the other thing is I, we're finally getting around to putting curtains up in the house. I've got everything done except for the parlor and now there are blinds. I just have been slowly replacing the blinds. The parlor needs to be done. It's not a high priority. The huge slider door off the kitchen is the final door that has to get done and I ordered some lace panels for that because I don't like a heavy curtain on the kitchen doors so this is the panels that I ordered I don't know if you can see this but it has a embroidered leaf design that's two layers. This is one layer right here. They're, they're too long because the door is like a, it's like a shadow box. I don't know how else to say it. It has a really deep wood 
frame that goes all the way around the window. I chose to do a spring rod and I didn't want to drill or nail or do any kind of damage to that wood. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks like furniture. I know I sound ridiculous trying to describe this, but anyway, so it's got a spring rod on the inside of the door and I bought four of these panels. Okay, so width wise, they're 54 inches wide and length, they are 84 inches long and they need to be 76 inches long from the rod to the floor. So obviously I have to hem them. All right, I have finished the drapes. This is our project. It is a Berta, it's 6340. It is a wrap skirt. This is the two views right here. This is the front of the skirt. This is the back of the skirt. This is the front of this skirt and this is the back of this skirt. So I already have all of Jessica's measurements for this particular skirt. It, her measurements are a little smaller than the German size 8 US. I'm, I have already sort of modified it to fit her body. So anyway, but the design is still the same. Okay, so the instructions are... English is right here. Right here they have French and right here they have Spanish and then you have to flip it over English, French, Spanish to get to the final step. Okay, so we have all of our pieces cut out except for the interfacing which I will do when I get to that which I think is right now. And we've already done cutting out. So, preparing pattern pieces, lengthening or shortening pattern pieces, cutting out, and it will tell you what this symbol means, these broken lines. Um, it is the center of a pattern piece but in no case a cut edge or a seam. So make sure that you are positive about what you're supposed to cut and what you're not supposed to cut. The cutting layouts on the pattern sheet show how the pattern pieces should be placed on the fabric. And that is what this right here is. I know we already talked about it. Okay. All right, and then this right here is the key, kind of the key. It says the dark shaded is right side, the wrong side is slightly lighter. The interfacing, it's got, they look like scribblies to me. This is the interfacing, this is lining, which is just kind of dotted, and this is batting. These two are not used in this particular pattern. You have right side, wrong side, and interfacing. Transferring your pattern markings. So I've got my pattern pieces all on my fabric. I've not removed any of the, these pattern pieces because I need to mark them. And in my case, I'm going to have to mark on the back side and the way I do that is, for example, these two little lines right here that we talked about yesterday. I am going to poke a hole on the front side, or poke a pin on the front side straight through, not at an angle. Just like that. And then I'll flip this over. Draw a line straight 
up from where that pin has entered into the back of the fabric. And once I've got that marked where the pin is, then I can draw these two lines a little bit better. All right, while I'm thinking about it, I will do piece number six. So this fold line right here is in the center. So unless you feel like you will miss that, you, you don't have to mark it because you just basically fold this piece in half. But you can mark it if you feel like you might need to do that. Okay, so for that dot right there, I just pushed a pin all the way through. Right there. And I'm going to separate these two pieces, but not take it off the pin. And I'm going to just draw a line where that pin emerged and then I'm going to take the pin out and I'm going to make these an X like that and that. Okay, that's the back. Full disclosure, I needed to trim an inch off the length of this skirt because I did not order enough fabric. I had already cut out the fronts, I believe. Was it the front or the back that I cut out? Doesn't matter. In any case, I did not order enough. So I cut off an inch and instead of using that inch to hem, I'm going to do a uh, finishing stitch across the bottom and then just fold that up a little bit and hem that down. You could use um, hem tape and get the same effect. So that's, that's that. Okay, I don't need to do that, I don't think. All right, now I recommend, if you've never followed a Berta pattern before, that you just absorb the pictures for just a minute. It helps because you're, you're going to see things that you would not see with just a quick glance. Uh, for one, this right here is the back seam. right here. So this is the right side of the fabric. This is the wrong side of the fabric right here. And these two pieces right here are the, I believe that's the back. So you, first thing you're going to do is stitch the back seam from top to bottom. And then we'll talk about the rest of it because you have to finish off these two pieces right here and do a side seam right here. So I'm looking at the pattern pieces, I mean the pictures, kind of getting what they're telling me and then I'm going to pop over and read the instructions. So we've talked about transferring the markings and we do need to cut out some interfacing right here and it will be going on some of the pieces of the waistband, not all. Okay, sewing. When sewing, the right sides of the fabric should be facing. That means right sides together. So for my skirt, I'm gonna have to take it apart off of the pattern piece. The first thing we do is stitch the center back seam. All right, these are the two back pieces. So I'm going to take them apart. And 
and put them back together again with the right sides together. So I am going to clip this rather than pin it. I plan to trim these seams with my pinking shears, which I have not replaced yet. I say I plan to because I hurt my hands, both of them, in kind of a weird way. I had, this is this the gardening, farming side of my channel. I don't have a video up of this, but I spray painted some T-posts black. You know, they're usually green with a white top. And I wanted to use them in the vegetable garden. And I wanted them to all be uniform. And some of them had rusted. Some of them were solid green. Some had a little bit of white still showing. Some were perfect, but I wanted them to all be uniform. So I gathered up all my half empty cans of black spray paint and I spray painted them. And when I got done spray painting them, I was out of paint. It was a perfect amount of paint for the job. I think I have 11 T-posts. And you guys, <laughs> there were two cans of spray paint that have a large button that you push down on that was like, I don't even know what it was like. It was so hard to push that button down but I was determined it was hot outside the garden is growing insane here's a picture of it I the the beans and all the climbing things that need something structurally to hold them up are getting there so I thought I don't want to be caught without this I'm gonna do it this is a good time the wind isn't blowing well, it wasn't when I started, and then it started blowing all, like every time I would, if I was standing over here, the wind was blowing. If I stood over here, the wind was blowing. It was just crazy. But anyway, there, there were several cans that had a very small, easy to push, perfect little button for dispensing the paint. But those two cans, oh my gosh, I don't even know what the brand is. I don't want to know what the brand is. They were horrible. Anyway, when I came in the house to cool off, I realized that I was having a hard time moving my hand. I used both. I, in the past, have been a slightly more able to do that with a variety of different things, but lately, I don't know, it's kind of weird. But anyway, as I, as I ramble on, I'm just going to say, I don't know about this because my hands are not healed up and that was I think either three days or four days ago. Today is Tuesday July the 16th and it might have been this past Saturday or Sunday but anyway I'm gonna give this a go and I thought about getting Kai this type serrated scissors. I'm still thinking about it. I don't know why I told you guys I think in the last video that these were her Fiskars and it might be because of the orange, but they're not. The name on the scissors is Blue Snail, and I don't know if I can... There we go. Blue Snail. So they're kind of a copycat color-wise, but here we go. Okay, welcome back. I skipped a day of recording. I had a number of things to attend to, so I wanted to show you 
with my Pilot Friction Pen. One of Berta's signature instructions is they have these marks on the patterns. And this one right here is a circle with the number one. Size eight and there's a circle and a number one. So that needs to be marked at the top of this pattern. I think I did, but I'm just gonna do it again and I'm just going to casually mark this one dot up here at the top of the pattern right there. Let's try air erase. It's pink. It may show up. Okay. All right. And then I need to take a pen and poke it right through the center of that dot that I drew and mark the other side. Okay, so I've got those two dots marked, or circles, or whatever you want to call them. They're number one. Okay, so on the front skirt panel, we have a one right here. So we're going to mark that. And I need to do it on the wrong side, so I'm going to poke this pin through the center of the dot and mark it on the wrong side of the pattern, or the fabric, I mean. And then I'll do the same thing to the other piece. But this time, I'm just going to pull it. I've pulled, I've got my pin right there in the middle of that dot. I've marked the inside of this one and now I'm going to mark right here. Now if you've got fabric that you cannot mark on, my suggestion, and I'm being, I mean, I, I would really do this, especially if you're working with a Berta pattern. My suggestion is to thread a needle with some heavy duty thread, or if you don't have heavy duty thread, just thread you can see and make a little knot that you can cut. I wouldn't tie it tight to the fabric. In fact, I'll just, I'll just try to do that real quick if I can find a needle. I'm just going to use some Guterman. I'm going to tie just a big old knot right in the middle of my thread, right, right there, not in the middle, but toward the end. I need to be able to see where the knots are, and that's one reason why you want to use a heavy duty thread. Okay, so here we go. And, and I'm just kind of taking a bite in my fabric. I pull it up and then I just cut like that. Okay, so that's marking the two spots that I need. Like so. And we're going to unpin this from the pattern. So the instructions are pretty, pretty good but they can get a little mishmashy. For example, you're going along under sewing right here, and it says when sewing, right sides of fabric should be facing, which, you know, we know that. And then it says the seam numbers on the pattern pieces indicate how to sew the pieces together, match same seam numbers. Okay, that's what we just did with the number one that we marked with our thread pieces. So, I've marked this pattern here, that corner, this corner and this corner have number one marking. So I'm going to take, remember right sides facing, so if I turn this piece right sides facing, this is where that mark is that I made. 
so it goes over here and matches up with this side. And then we stitch all along this side seam right here. All right. And then on the other side of the backs, this is the two backs, and I can tell I'm not having any difficulty at all, but this is a busy print, but I can tell because I already clipped the back seam. I'm not going to clip the side seam until I get the other front piece put on. So I find where I have marked that with thread, and that's it right there. It's kind of like sew by numbers. So you're going to notice on these pieces that you will have stitch markings again. You will have a four and a two on the left tie waistband and you will have four on the left tie band and you will have a three, yeah, just a three on the front right waistband and then you will have a two and a three on the back waistband. So I recommend getting these marked in such a way that you'll be able to see the marks and put these together in the proper order. It does sort of show you and it kind of explains um, how to do it. But the next step for me is to cut the interfacing that I need for this piece. Let's see. So it's basically from here to here on piece three. Piece number six gets a whole piece of interfacing. Piece number four gets a whole piece of interfacing, but piece five does not get any interfacing. It'll be easier to mark the stitch order once I have those pieces of interfacing ironed on because interfacing, at least the, the interfacing I'm going to use is white and it will be a lot easier for me to see that. So I'm going to take care of it real quick and then I'll be right back. I don't like having it in the seam so when I cut my interfacing out I typically cut it a little bit smaller than the pattern piece. So for example for piece four I will let this edge right here kind of overhang so that I will have this amount plus this amount. So I'm going to add a little extra there. And then this edge also, I need to come down just a bit like that. And then I'll cut it. And as you can see, it's kind of centered in the middle-ish like so, and it's not going to be in any seams. Oh my God. And the crazy thing is that spider has been in that bathroom and I have not been able to catch him. Well, I've been too afraid to catch him for a long time and he just appeared like level with my face and I thought, ah, oh, you've got to go. So we have our interfacing attached to our waistband pieces. This is piece number four and it has a four and a two. So I'm just going to write, flip this over, four and a two. 
right on my inner facing. On piece number six, I had trouble getting the inner facing on, but it doesn't seem to have affected how it feels from the right side. Nope. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Make sure this is the right direction. Okay. So this side has a two and this side has a three. And I left this pinned on so I know that this is the right side and it does not have on the interfacing part of it, it does not have a number. There's a number five and a number three. So I'll flip this over. Now you could use any kind of markings that you want. I'm most comfortable with the waistband sections doing these numbers. Otherwise, I would not remember. I'd constantly have to be referring back to the pattern pieces. So for me, it it just helps if I don't have to worry about it. I will have to mark the skirt panels again. They're over there. Um, and this piece, number five, I think. Yeah. I also need to mark this one. It's got a four. And if you have trouble getting your fabric marked, if it's a darker fabric, another method I have used in the past is little pieces of like paper, little tiny pieces of paper with, you know, they're taped on or glued on. And then you just remove those as you go through the pattern and you stitch things together. What, whatever will work the best for you. We've done the side seams on the front and if you decide that you want pockets on this skirt when you're stitching the front to the back each front side to each back side that is when you would put those those in so you would add a pocket in here somewhere okay so we've done the, the side seams and now we're going to do the front edges that's right Okay, yeah, front edges have to be stitched. And by front edges, they mean this right here. So this part of the skirt that's visible on both, both front pieces. So the right side and the left side, you will need to fold down and then fold down again and then just stitch it down. I am going to look, I'm pretty sure I have some, either some dark blue thread or something that will blend in a little bit better than white. So fold it and then fold it again right there. I'll get them pressed down and I will be right back. All right, I'm going to look for thread now. I've already pressed the skirt and let's just see what I have. Between the dark blue, and I don't know if this is showing up. This is dark blue, this is black. And I think this is a blue black or blue green black. I don't see any red undertones. No, I don't think it's going to work. A little bit too dark. And I totally forgot about this one. Oh, I think it's, while it's a little bit on the blue side, it's actually a better match than all the other colors. So it does disappear in here, so in this area. So it is the closest I have. And frankly, if I went to the fabric store for, for thread for this, 
this is probably what I would end up with or something related to it. All right, so here we are, stitched down on both right and left. Okay. So now it tells you, I, I do need to check to make sure that I do not forget about the opening on this piece right here. And I think it's this piece right here on these two pieces. Lay the front left waistband on back waistband. Okay, so front left waistband. And if you don't have it written on here somewhere, the pieces, like this is piece number five, they are up here on the very beginning of the pattern, it tells you front left waistband is four. So find piece four right here, back waistband, which is six. Okay, now I need to mark those lines. I can still kind of see the marks I made originally, but I'm gonna go ahead and remark it with my air erase pen right there. So you have a seam two here, that you've drawn a two there in that corner, and this is number two right here. Okay, we're going to do this right sides together. So you're going to do a seam along the edge of piece number six and piece number four. So we've pressed that seam, and the next step is, I guess to make this simpler, I will back waistband is this one, and this is piece four. Okay, so I think you can see that. Piece six, and piece four, okay? So then the next thing we're gonna do is stitch the tie band. The tie band is five. Yeah, it says piece five right there. All right, piece number five. So this is piece number four. So this is stitch seam four is right there and seam four is right here. Take this and attach it to this. So we have a four here and we have a four here. Step number four, lay front right waistband with integral tie band on back waistband. This is the front right waistband with the integral tie band. And this is the end that has the little marks on it right there. And now we're going to stitch, stop, stitch, stop and we'll do that twice. Now when we press this open there should be 
a little opening and it's right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. I'm using the burnishing end of my point turner to get this pressed down. Okay, now we're going to stitch on the waistband. So we're, we're going to pin the waistband right sides together with the upper skirt edge. You will have your first side seam on this side. is right here. So you'll have a side seam matching up with the waistband. The waistband seams will match up this way. You'll have your first waistband seam here matching up with this side seam. Then you will have your back seam for your two skirt backs will not have a seam on, this, on the uh, waistband. The next seams that match up will be this side seam, which matches up with this seam in the waistband. The final seam on the waistband matches up with this front edge. So it's pinned on there. Oh my God, I'm just about to explain. It's so hot in this room. Anyway, we have pinned right sides together and we've matched the seams. We've matched the markings. Yes, and we're gonna stitch the waistband down. Now we're going to fold the bands in half, right sides facing. So right sides facing, I know that seems odd, but I'm going to fold it in half. Let me cut these threads and whiskers here. And you want to make sure that it's in half on the part that is not attached to the skirt. That's where you can tell if you've got it folded in half. Okay, so our next step is to fold the tie bands in half, right sides together, and we're going to stitch along the folded edge, just on the tie bands. Now I do want to caution you not to stitch right here. If you do, you won't be able to turn your tie band right side out. Okay, so see how I used the pencil eraser to push from the end? Now I've got the end and all I have to do is pull and it just comes right through. Okay, we'll do the other side, same way. I'm just gonna separate it like that and put the, with thicker fabrics, this will be a little more difficult. And I like to just go ahead and push it so that the points of the end are pushed through while I've got the pencil in there. And then I'll just pull it. All right, so once you get those turned, you'll notice that the waistband wants to flip over, which is a good thing, except that you've got to press it to the inside. Press this part up and then this part over and you will be folding this down on top of that, just like that. So there's a lot of pressing here. I do like to trim this a little. I'm just going to use my regular scissors. Okay, be really careful when you're doing this. You don't want to catch the waistband. 
All right, I'm gonna take it over to the ironing board and give it a press. And then when you come back, we'll be stitching the waistband down like that. Okay, now that you've got this pressed over your trimmed waistline seam on the top side, you're just going to stitch it down. Now you can do it by hand if you prefer. All right, so there is the, well, I'll turn it this way so it looks more normal. There's the waistband right there. I do not see how to be honest with you, the tie end is supposed to fit. It would be here that it's supposed to fit through. I'm not even gonna worry about it. She already has one that I made and it works fine for her to overlap. The way I plan to hem this, since it's going to be a little it was cut a little shorter than she prefers due to my lack of fabric. I'm going to run zigzag over the raw edge. Just go along and clip them off. I'm go like I did with the waistband, I'm going to use a lot of starch to make my life easier. And when I come back, this will be folded and folded for a tiny little hem like that right there. Yeah, you wrap it this way. This goes all the way around. This is the piece that's supposed to go in. This, there's an opening right here, but it, it isn't, in my case, it's not wide enough for this to go through. So the last skirt that I made for Jessica off of this pattern, she is wearing it like this. And there are several things I've thought about in making both of them. And one is, if you wanted to, your waistband could be made out of a different color fabric or a coordinating fabric. Right there. Or it doesn't have to be. I think this would be made uh, really pretty in a chalet or some type of polyester. And you can adjust the hem if you want to. All right guys, so this is our next project. I'm going to use this knit fabric. It is pop knit. As you can see, it's quite stretchy. And I got it from Joanne. Honestly, don't remember how much fabric I ordered. Let me look. Okay, I ordered three yards of this fabric because for one thing, it was really, really inexpensive. It was marked down. And I decided, you know, it's a cute little print. I could use it for a couple of things. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. And I will see you in this video. Bye.